Okay, hello everyone and welcome. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Hall of Champions deck. So, I've been playing this deck a lot. Um, it's not a top tier deck, I don't think, but it's definitely viable. Um, if you don't know about it, it's an exalted kind of bant deck. Not too much removal, but some really nice creatures, some interesting cards. Um, and I just find it really fun. So if you make good decisions, you should do well with uh, Hall of Champions. So I'm actually going to do two deck builds for this. The first one, that, which is this one, is going to be my deck build. It's going to be a little bit slower, but I feel it's going to offer quite a lot. Um, and it's just going to have some really good synergy. Um, it's going to have an answer to everything, basically. So this is the build I prefer. I'm also going to post a more aggressive sort of rush build, um, which may be more your style. For this deck, personally, I prefer my build, but both will be good. So anyway, I'm going to start off by showing you the lands. So I've actually customized this. I'm going to include 10 planes, 4 islands, and 6 forests. That's based on the cards that I've chosen. So if you're going to sort of make deviations from the build, then you may want to consider these lands. So anyway, I've also included four Terramorphic Expanses. I think you need to include all four, because these will make your starting hand choices a lot more, or a lot easier, basically. Because there uh, is a common problem in this deck to not have the right land. Like, you may not have an island when you need one, so definitely include those Terramorphics. Um, the first card I've included is Death Duelist. Now, I'm not really it's a good card but I'm not really a fan of it in this deck because it doesn't really synergize with the rest of the, the deck but it does have first dragon shroud um, so the reason I've included one of them is just because it's really good against Avacyn if he's trying to rush you down and you have one of these he can't really deal with it so he's probably gonna get a lot of kills with this death jewel list so I've included that um, next I've got the not vine paladin so whenever this one attacks, you get plus one, or it gets plus one, plus one to end of turn for each untapped creature. So this is um, in addition to Exalted. So if you have this guy out, and then you have, say, an Exalted creature, he'll get plus one, plus one until end of turn because the other creature's untapped. And then he'll get plus one, plus one from the Exalted because he's attacked alone. So this guy can get uh, pretty beefy, and he's just really good. So definitely include him. Um, I've got two Quasili Pride Mages. So again, they're exalted, but they you can pay one mana and sacrifice them to destroy a target artifact or enchantment. Um, these are really cost efficient. 2-2 two, two for two mana. And they just have a lot of cool and really useful effects. So I've included two of these. Um, I've included a Sigil Blessing. Uh, it's just a really nice card. I'd like to have at least one of these. Um, yeah, it sort of keeps your opponent guessing. If you leave mana open, a white and a green, they're going to sort of maybe expect you to have Sigil Blessing if you've used it once before. So I just like to have this option. It can be really helpful, it can surprise enemies. Or it can make enemies paranoid, so I like to run at least one of these. Um, I've also got two Martial Coups. Now, not the most cost efficient card. But the reason I've kept them in is because um, if you make the value of X5 or more, then you can destroy all other creatures. So removal is very rare in this deck. Um, so I've included both of them purely for that destroy all creatures effect, even though you need seven lands for it. Um, any removal is good removal, basically. So anyway, I've been playing the deck a lot and I've just found that I needed these. Um, so next I've included Janara. so one of each mana type. It's flying, but you can pay one mana and one planes to put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. So it's pretty cost efficient because it's flying 3-3 three, three for only 3 mana, but it also has this other cool ability, so... It just seems like a decent card really, so I've included that. So next we have the Guiltspire Avenger. So it's 3 mana, one of each type again. It's only a 2-2 two, two creature, but it does have Exalted, 
and you can tap it to destroy creatures that have dealt damage to you this turn. Or destroy one creature that's dealt damage to you this turn. So having this on the board can prevent people from attacking because, you know, they don't want their creature to die. So it's a pretty nice sort of defense against rushes, even though it's going to be turn four before you actually get to use the ability because of summoning sickness. Um, but I still like it. And uh, if, even if you don't need the ability, it's still just got exalted, so it's pretty decent. So next I've got three Rocks War Monks. Um, these are just really useful cards. Again, one of each mana type. It doesn't have Exalted, but it is a 3-4 creature with lifelink. So um, these have sort of saved my life in many games. Um, they're quite beefy, which is helpful. You know, Searing Spears won't kill it because it's got 4 life. And yeah, it's just for the lifelink mainly, it's just pretty good. So, um, three of those. I have included one Dauntless Escort. Um, it's a bit more flexible with the mana cost as well. It's a 3 through creature for 3 mana, so that's good in itself. It doesn't have Exalted, but you can sacrifice it at any time and give all your creatures indestructible until end of the turn. So, if they're going to play Damnation or Mutilate, in fact, not Mutilate, but um, certainly Damnation, and this is on the board, you can just sacrifice him and all your creatures are saved. Same if they have like uh, Nova Blast Worm or something. Or maybe if they're targeting a more valuable creature with um, a Doom Blade. Just sacrifice this guy. It should all be good. So this next card, you have to include this. Well, it would be very wise to include this. It's 3 mana to cast it normally. It's a 2-3 reach creature. But the ability is amazing. So if a creature is attacking you and you control the forest and the plains, you may cast Quasili Ambusher without paying its mana cost and as though it had flash. So you can basically cast it for free and you can cast it as it had as though it had flash. So if they're attacking you with like a soul warden or something, you can just throw this out before the attack goes through and then block whatever creature they're attacking you with. So this has won me a lot of games by taking out some of the enemy's valuable creatures and they never see it coming. So yeah, definitely include this. So two Behemoth Sledges. So these give a creature plus two plus two lifelink and trample. A very valuable card. I mean, they're a bit expensive. Equip cost three and three to cast, but lifelink and trample together as well as the plus two plus two. This is very useful in a lot of situations. So we've got two of those. i got two Pariahs. Pariah is just amazing. So if you don't know what it does, all the damage that will be dealt to you is dealt to Enchanted Creature instead. So basically, if you're about to die, you can just throw it on one of their creatures and all damage to you next turn will just get redirected to that creature. So not only will it take out their creature when they attack you, you'll also survive for another turn. And um, if you can get this thing on Dawn Elemental, uh, which is one of Ajani's creatures, um, I think Dawn Elemental has an ability where you can prevent all damage that's dealt to Dawn Elemental. Or if Pariah goes on that, you basically become indestructible. Um, nothing can touch you. Uh, so it's pretty cool. So yeah, I included both of those. Now the Bant Charms, four of them I've included, because these are the uh, only removal you get other than Martial Coup. They're not proper removal, but you can put target creature on bottom of its owner's library. So sometimes that's better than actually killing the creature. Like the zombie deck won't be able to get it back from the graveyard because it won't be there. Um, but also you can destroy an artifact with it. So if they have... Um, if you're against Sword of the Samurai and they have Umazawa's Jite, you can just destroy that. Or you can counter an instant spell, so it's really versatile. Um, you definitely need sort of at least three. But I've put four in. Oops. Um, okay, next we have Wargate. So with this, you can search your library for a permanent card with mana cost X or less. Put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle your library. Um, it's a bit expensive, so not really essential, but I like to have it in the deck. Um, 
yeah, you can just bring out anything you need. You can also, if you have six mana, you can use it to bring out a pariah. Um, can be pretty clutch. Uh, nobody really expects it. You can also use it to bring out an artifact. Uh, lots of things. So I just find it quite useful, even though it's expensive. But that's just my preference. And this card is amazing. It's four mana for a three-three exalted. But whenever a creature you control attacks alone, you can just double strike until end of turn. So if you combo this with like a lifelink creature, you can just do a lot of damage and gain a lot of life. Um, it's just really amazing. So definitely include this guy. Now same with this one, Knight of New Alara. Each other multicolored creature you get, you control gets plus one plus one for each of its colors. So, seeing as lots of your creatures are multicolored, almost all of them, you're going to get at least plus two plus two for the majority of creatures. So yeah, this is a pretty cool card. Sublime Archangel, um, it's pretty good really, it's just pretty cost efficient. 4 mana, 4-3, four, flying and exalted, and other creatures you control have exalted. So for my deck, or my build in particular, this is good because a lot of my creatures don't have the exalted. Like the Rocks War Monks, and uh, this one. Even these tokens can get exalted when you play Martial Coup. So, Sublime Archangel synergizes quite well with my build, so I put two of them in. Uh, Restoration Angel, I think, is a must. So it's four mana and has flash. So, when it enters the field, you may exile target non-angel creature you control, then return the card to the battlefield under your control. So if they have a pacifism on your creature, you can just throw this in, exile your creature, and then bring it back, and the pacifism is gone. So any kind of auras that you don't want on your creatures can just be removed. Also, if you cast this as your creature is being targeted by Doomblade, you can just exile the creature and then bring it back onto the field, and then Doomblade isn't targeting it anymore. So, yeah, it's just pretty amazing. And the flash, uh, you can just cast it while people are attacking you during their turn. So, amazing card. Rocks Charger. Um, I'm actually not really sure about this one. It's 4 mana for 3-3, three, three. it's got Trample and Exalted, but I've already got Artifacts that can give me Trample. So I find this is just a little bit expensive. The only good thing about it is the um, very versatile mana cost. So you can include this if you want. I actually might make a quick change here and just bring in a different card instead. Um, yeah, so where was I? Ivory Mask. This is situational, so you don't have to include this. But it is a hard counter to a lot of decks. So if you're playing against Firewave, or if you're playing against Dodge and Burn, um, it's going to be really good to have this. It basically gives you Shroud, which means you, the player, can't be targeted by spells. So Lava Axes, Corrupt, Searing Spears, um, lots of spells that different decks have are made entirely useless when this is on the field. Uh, so I just really like it. Also, um, one of Demir's card, or a few of Demir's card that make you uh, discard things, they won't be able to target you either. Um, so I kind of like it, and I've included it. Now, Faith's Reward, another one that can be situational, but it's an instant for four mana. You can return to the battlefield all permanent cards in your graveyard. You'll put there from the battlefield this turn. So, say you're playing against Eldrazi's, they just use all the dust. Well, just play face reward um, after it. So they kill all your creatures, and then you get them back again instantly. So situational sometimes, but pretty amazing. Also, you can just use it if one of your creatures dies. If they just Doomblade something, and you want it back, you can just play face reward. So it does have a bit of versatility. Um, next card, Battle Race Angel. A bit expensive for 5 mana. It's a 4-4 Flying Exalted. And this is the effect I like the most. And whenever a creature you control attacks alone, it gains lifelink at the end of turn. So this can just be a really good card to have. So I've included that. I've got two Finest Hours. Um, basically gives you an additional combat step. 
and it has Exalted in itself as well. So this has won me a lot of games. Um, mainly because it's hard to react to because you can it's, it puts, goes into effect on the same turn that you play it. And if they have all their land tap, they're not going to be able to do anything about this. They're going to take way more damage than they expected and sometimes actually lose the game because of it. So yeah, definitely include that. At least one of them, I would say. But I've included two. Also included Privileged Position. So it gives all other permanents you control hexproof. So again, if you're against dodge and burn, or fire wave, or even um, dead walkers, where they have lots of sort of target a creature and destroy it type things, um, this is going to be amazing because everything will get hexproof. So they're not going to be able to target anything. See, so yeah, I, I really like this one, even though it's expensive. And now these last two cards. Um, mainly for the land cycling ability I've included them. Um, I've got a lot of fairly expensive stuff in this deck. So these two land cycling things are really helpful. Because if you see them in your starting hand and you have two lands, you know that this can be a third land of any type you want. Um, so that's good. But also, it can actually be useful as an instant. Because it untaps all your creatures basically and gives them a buff. So if you're against Moldea or Demir and they've used Sleep on you or they've used Tangle on you, you can just use Gleam of Resistance, untap everything, and um, they're good to go. So I've included both. Uh, you know, I do have a fairly land, well, a little bit land heavy build. The mana curve, not much low mana stuff, but quite a, quite a lot of three to four mana stuff. So I find these really helpful. So yeah, that's my deck build, and as I mentioned, I will be doing a second deck build, which will be a lot quicker, um, so it might be more your style, but definitely give this one a try as well, um, because, you know, it's based off of my experience playing this deck and what it needs. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe if you did, I'll be making deck builds for every deck in the game. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.